Yo guys, Ardeo here with a short video to discuss the metagame. This is probably the most imbalanced metagame that we ever had. Basically, we have two drops and three drops just dominating battlegrounds. And value-wise, they're better than most six drops. So what am I talking about and what can you do to win in this metagame? Let's get started. When the patch hit, the patch didn't feel that crazy. When craziness happened is when they introduced Leapfrogger. Also, it took a little bit of time for people to realize how powerful Impatient Doomsayer is. Right now, most people at high ranks are just forcing beasts or forcing demons. But what does that mean and how can you play it uh, the best way? In my opinion and in my experience, again, I'm not dominating the ladders. I barely got back to top 200 after having a couple of rough days. And now I feel like pretty confident on the metagame. What I'm doing is in demon... If the lobby has every single tribe available, obviously lobbies don't, but let's assume everything is available, I will go demons. I'll do my absolute best to go demons. I start the game with the mindset of playing demons. I want to get tavern free as quickly as I can, and I want to overstay, overroll for impatient doomsayer. Heroes such as Reno are perfect for this situation. Heroes that can maneuver tokens, usually triple into free drops, and then proceed to also go to free. You want to do whatever you can to maximize your chance to find Doomsayer. Now, if beasts are also available and you happen to get offered Leapfroggers, go for them. But you, su you should still play Demon Beast lobbies with the mindset of playing Demons, in my opinion, again. Because all you need to play Demons is one impatient Doomsayer. To play Beast, you need Frog, Baron, and more. So, it's simple math. Finding one free drop is way easier than finding a 2-drop, a 5-drop, a 4-drop, a 5-drop. Some lobbies... I don't even get the Doomsayer, and then I'll just pro naturally level. And on Tower 4 you can play Max. On Tower 4 you can triple into Mama Bear. You can triple into Nomi. So, try your best to play Demons, but also be aware that 1. Dragons are powerful, mostly with combos around Whelp Smuggler. 2. Mama Bear Beasts are more consistent than playing Leapfrogger Beasts until you have one Leapfrogger and one Baron, at which point you can pivot from Mama Bear Beast to Leapfrogger Beast. But I find it way more consistent to build around Mama Bear and just get like a lot of Dev Rattle Beasts, and then buy a Frog and when offered buying a Dragon, a uh, Baron, sorry, not a Dragon, and then slowly going to the Frog build, then just buying the Frog and rolling like crazy for Baron. Because if you don't find the Baron, you're gonna be in a very bad spot. And if you do find it, people can play around it with Zap. Whereas Mama Bear offers some more consistency to your build. So that's the way I like playing Beasts. Not that often, usually starting with Mama. And again, I prefer Demons much more. Now, what do you do if Beasts and Demons are not available? Then in that situation, I would uh, queue another game. No, I'm kidding. I would go for either Dragons or Nomi Elementals. Power level wise, those are probably the most powerful things you can do and also accounting for consistency. By the way, there's a caveat. Morlocks are bad, but if you manage to get your hands on Flurgal, he can be amazing even in demon lobbies. And you just play Murlocs and try to poison the Murlocs and beat the demons that way. So keep in mind, Flurgal is very good in this metagame, one of the top heroes. And um, you should play it regardless of the tribe bands. Anyways, I digress. Uh, going back to dragons and going back to elementals. So. You play Elementals only if you discover Nomi. If you discover Little Rag, try to ignore it. Try to pick something else. If you discover Genie, the same. Little Rag and Genie are really bad. So the only way to play Elementals, in my opinion, is through Nomi. So play normally. If you can discover a 5, go for it. If you get Nomi, maybe consider picking it and building around it. That's the only way I would play Elementals right now. Obviously, if you get offered free Little Rags, sure, maybe you can make it work. But in av on average, only Nomi is your key to Elementals. Similar uh, for Pirates, only Eliza is the key to play Pirates. Sometimes, again, you get games with two Hogars, but I would stay away from Hogar, unless you're Reno. Some people say, say that it's easy to go in the Hogar with the new Pirate. I would still stay away from it. Just, if I find Eliza, I'll try to build Pirates and then go for the Scallywag scam build with Baron Khadgar. Eliza, and um, Dante Scallywags. Otherwise, I ignore Pirates. If I get Flurgal, I go Murlocs. Otherwise, I ignore Murlocs. If I get Nomi, I go Elementals. Otherwise, I ignore Elementals. 
I'm putting all my efforts to finding Doomsayer in Demon Lobbies. Beasts, I'm looking mostly for Mama Bear, but if Bob showers me with uh, Leap Froggers, I'll go for it. Dragons, it's very difficult to like figure out exactly how to play Dragons, and that's the one part of the metagame I haven't understood yet. I had success, Dragons, with Rafam Curve Heroes, like Rafam Maev and stuff. Uh, Chroma Wing, stay on one more, and then go to five with your triples, discover six drops, get Caligos, and then from there it's easy to play Dragons, because if you have Caligos, Whelp Smuggler makes it so much better to play Caligos Dragons, like so much better, and then you're basically a better Nomi. Other than that, obviously, Cthulhu Dragons works very efficiently, but I'm not yet uh, sure what are the best mid-game options for Dragons. Like, Proto Drake seems interesting, but all the mid-game combos that the Dragons have, I'm not super impressed by them. So, I usually play Dragons again on heroes that can stay on 1, and then go to 4 or 5 with triples, ideally to 5. <coughs> Quillbor is the one trip is the one tribe I haven't um, talked about. I would ignore Quillbor, other than uh, sometimes getting a very early Agum, followed by a very early Hook Task. Uh, hook Task, sorry, uh, that was a Freudian sleep. So very early Agum with very very early Flat Task or very early Agum on Hook Task because Hook Task can hero power one drops into one drops and create a lot of blood gems. Basically. Agum still works, nothing else really works. Divine Shields are a bit worse than before because of the dragon that kills Divine Shields, availability of ghouls and all that. So I don't really want to go Ground Shaker anymore. It's just Quillbor are only powerful through Agum and obviously Flat Tusk. Obviously you can play a Charlie for a couple of turns in a Dragon Comp, you can play it in whatever if you want some stats, but I wouldn't build around it. Even Charlie, uh, Gamma Gun is pretty weak, so try to avoid that. Um, Max, Max, I also don't understand perfectly. I try to avoid them, but if you want to play Max, Town Comp on Tavern 4, triple into 5s and into 6s, get Macros, for sure. Get Omega Busters. I haven't had that many successful Mech games. So, Mech and Dragons are still the points in the metagame that I'm still not understanding fully. And, uh... Then you might ask, why did you make this video? Well, I made this video because I still think I have a good understanding in the rest of the meta game. Yeah, sure, I don't know the best ways of playing dragons and mechs, or all the ways of playing dragons and mechs, but I kind of understood demons and uh, beasts. I didn't talk about demons, and one last thing before I end the video, I want to cover demons as well, because I told you how I want to go into beasts, I didn't tell you how I want to go into demons. So basically, you go Doomsayer, and then you try to maximize Doomsayer value for like one or two turns, also depends on your health. Power level to 5, sometimes to 6 if you can afford it, but make sure you don't die. I had plenty of games where I just got Doomsayer and then I died. You also have to manage your health. So you want to mix between minions that summon minions and strong minions. And then one turn, when you're like pretty low on health, you just go in and go for max strength. What is max strength on the demons board? The most important minion for demons is Urzul. Tons of stats and keeps growing. And then you want Felbat, because Felbat makes your whole board grow rather than like one minion growing as Urzul. Urzul is easy to play around because people can just play Poisonous, put it first and kill your Urzuls. Even without Murlocs in the lobby, they can buy the 1-1. One -one. They can buy my x knife. if beasts are available. So you want uh, both Urzul and then Felbat. And it's a nice mix. I have plenty of games on my YouTube. Um, sorry, I have plenty of games on my Twitch where I play Demons. Probably some of them are also going to be on YouTube if they are not already. Um, that's with my meta snapshot. I'm still playing. The meta keeps evolving. Hopefully they hotfix something. I would like to see Doomsayer, Frog, and Whelp Smuggler uh, changed somehow. Why Whelp Smuggler? Because if they nerf the other two, Whelp Smuggler is going to dominate the meta game. That's why. And it's busted on Cthulhu in a couple of other compositions, such as with Blood Gems and such. So yeah, that's the meta game. It's very weird that two drops and three drops dictate the meta, but I'm trying my best to adapt to it. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.